Hello, my name is Pastor Eric Cunningham, and I'm the pastor of God's Way Gospel Church. We would just like to greet you and welcome you here to God's Way Gospel Church. This morning, we preached a wonderful message that dealt with Psalms 34, verse 1 through 8, where David declared he will bless the Lord at all times. And so we were inspired this morning to continue to praise God. That word blessed in the Hebrew means to praise. And we were excited about the things that David revealed to us about his life, how God had brought him out of some dark places, how God had opened some doors, how David was in some places where he shouldn't have been as a believer. And some of you know what that's like to be in a place that you shouldn't be and you're a child of God. David was shamed because of it. It was a humiliating situation. And many of us experience humiliating situations when we don't put our total trust in God. That's what David experienced. The Bible teaches us that David went through all this. He begins to spread the good news about God. And not only that, God delivered him from some conflicting and troubling situations. We praise God for what he's doing here in this ministry and the deliverance that's taking place amongst the people from some troubling and conflicting issues. We thank God for his presence here at God's Way Gospel Church, and we want you to enjoy this message. We want you to experience the goodness of God, just like David did when he said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. David knew by experience. That's what it means in the Hebrew, to taste. It means to experience God on another level. David experienced God in an awesome way because he held on to God by faith. He trusted God, even though David had times where he messed up. His ultimate faith and trust was in God. As a result, he had the experience that most of us as Christians desire to have. And we can continue to have as we trust in God. We can experience the goodness of God in the land of the living. Well, God bless you. Thank you for listening to me at this moment. And we want you to enjoy this message. Hope to see you soon.
to take a journey this morning in Psalms 34, verse 1 through 8. Psalms 34, verse 1 through 8. Let us stand to our feet at this time. And at this time, we will get ready to read God's word and you'll hear him. And then we will listen to what the Lord has to say to us. That we might be encouraged to continue on in him. Just want to say hello to everybody out there in TV land, radio, internet land. Come on, guys, with Gospel Church. Give God the glory for this ministry. We want to let you know that you're welcome here at God's Way Gospel Church. Will you welcome everyone who's on TV land waiting to hear from us? Will you just welcome them and let them know? worthy to be yes. praised. Psalms 34 verse 1 through 8. And it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And deliver me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. How blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. I would like to speak to you with the subject title this morning. Praise is what I do. All right now. Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If that's your lifestyle, Amen. you might as well praise us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might as well give them the glory right now. Hallelujah. Because that's what you do. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When we take a look at the book of Psalms, we realize that Psalms is a collection of songs that are theological statements and poetic represent human dialogue with God. The Psalms is the most complete collection of the Hebrew poetry and worship material in the Bible. Okay. The Psalms gives us clues to understand the Israelite worship on both a corporate and individual level. The Psalms typify different responses to God in actions and words. The Psalms, on the other hand, serve to articulate the hope and the despair, the faith and the fear, the praise, and of those who express themselves to God as they talk about life's ups and downs. Uh -huh. And all of us can make this morning that life has its ups and downs. Yes. And so as we look at this particular portion of text, we see David as he ex expresses his feeling towards God. David pins this song after he had an encounter in a place called Gath with a king who might have just took his life because David was in a place where he should not have been. Okay. Being a man of God, he put himself under a pressure and exposure that he didn't have to go through okay. because he didn't think things all the way through. 
And so when we look at verse 1, we see David simply expressing the idea that he will bless the Lord at all times. When David expresses this in the Psalms, the word bless, according to the LXX, means to celebrate with praise. David is saying, I will speak well of God. In the Hebrew, the word bless simply means to praise. Okay. So when David pens this song, he's got an attitude of praise because he looks over his life. Okay. And after looking over his life, he comes to the conclusion that God is truly worthy of all the praise. Yes, 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 yes. So as he pens this, David is talking about both the ups and downs of life. Mm -hmm. David is talking about times in his life where he didn't understand what was going on. David was talking about it is a requirement for each believer, not just David himself, to be consistent in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. Okay. And so David says, praise is what I do. He says, I will praise the Lord. Yes. At all times, that means he will praise God for his protection. Oh, yeah. He will praise God for life, health, and strength. David is saying, I will praise God through the trials. Yeah. And I will praise God through the struggles and through yeah. the hardships. Yeah. Yeah. David says, I will praise God through the tribulations of life. Mm -hmm. He says, I will always give God praise because I realize God always always works things out. Amen. Amen. And I wish I had a witness up in here who would admit God can work some things out in your life. The text reveals to us that David speaks from a mature position in God. He's not no new Christian given this idea of praising God. No, when you're new, you have your times where you don't even believe God sometimes. And when you're new in God, you don't quite understand him. When you're new in God, you don't really know how to appreciate him like that all the time. But when you're mature and you're stuck with God through the long haul and life has shot some arrows at you and some fiery darts have come your way and the devil's been working on your children and working on your heart and your mind and the devil's been working in your home and the devil's been working in your relationships but you trust God it all. And every now and then when they go to bed, you go get some oil and pour it on your head like they used to do back in church in, in the day. And you put some oil over their head and say, devil, you are lying. You're going to get your hands off my children. You're going to get your hands off my spouse. You're going to get your hands off my home. You're going to get your hands off my mind. Do I have a witness up in here who knows through the experience of life that God is worthy to Yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. David is yes, simply Lord. looking over his life. I mean, this brother is mature when he's writing this. This brother is expressing from the heart how he feels about God because he realized God is faithful. He realized God is just. He realized God is loving. He realized God is kind. He realized God is merciful. He realized God is forgiven. He realized God is worthy to be praised. So he makes up in his mind that this is going to be a continual action. He says, I will, which means David has made up his mind that this is just going to be how things are going to be. Okay, come on. He refuses to live a life of complaint. And so he gives us the idea knowing that the praise that comes from him, watch this, will be seen both privately by God and corporately amongst the saints. Okay, come on. He says the praise that I have to offer God will be seen and heard from my lips. Yeah. This is not just a pity pat praise or clap your hands, stomp your feet praise. But David is saying, you know what, God has been so good, I got to speak well about him. I got to share him with somebody else. David says, God has been so good, it's encouraging me to sing this song. Yeah. 
Yes. Have you ever been there? I mean, in whatever time or season of your life, and God put a song in your heart. Maybe you was at work, boss was getting on your nerves, yes. things was yes. going crazy, pressure was on your yes. back, yes. bills need to yes. be paid, life throws what it has to throw at you. Sometimes it seems like you got a bunch of limits, but when you put it in God's hand, he'll show you how to make lemonade. Is there anybody else? Oh. It knows anything about God turning a sour situation into something you can enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David says, I'm enjoying life and I'm going to express it from my lips, which flows from the abundance of my heart. Yeah. This is why Jesus said, from the abundance of the heart. Mm, uh -huh. The mouth speaketh. Yes. David says, I have to speak well of him and I can't keep it to myself. Right. So he says, my soul will make boast in the Lord. David is simply saying, I got to brag about him. <laughs> He's opened some doors for me that I got to brag about. David is not saying, I'm going to brag on self. Because the Bible tells us that we not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, but we ought to think of ourselves soberly within a reasonable perspective. We understand that we are human and we are flawed, but when David looks at God, he sees no flaws. <laughs> and he doesn't see human qualities in a sense of God being able to make a mistake. And so David realizes that God is worthy to be bragged on. God is worthy to be expressed and to be told about. So he says this, the humble will hear and rejoice. David understood everybody not going to praise God when you get your testimony. That's true. That's true. This is why he says the humble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because people who are not humble like to get glory for themselves. Okay. Okay. David says those who want God get the glory. They hear and they rejoice. Mm -hmm. David understands the only way people going to get with him and rejoice about the Lord if they're humble. Okay. Come on, these are those who submit to God's will. Why would the humble rejoice? Because they know if God did it for you, Mm, come on, come on. He'll do it for them too. Yes, they know that if you have a testimony, that God will give them a testimony if they hang on in there yes. when they're going through the test. Yes, so David says, I got to give him the glory. So he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Now David called forth for corporate worship. This is why we're here on Sunday. We come together to magnify the name of the Lord. This is corporate worship. This is a time where saints all over the country and all over the world come together to magnify his name. Yeah. David says we got to get together. We got to get together with the saints and express his goodness. The word magnifies means something special. All right. It doesn't mean that you can enlarge God because he's too big to be enlarged. It doesn't mean you can think of him to be so huge and, and, and so powerful to the point that you can make him seem bigger than what he is. Don't you know the moment you begin to describe God, you really limit him. Because he has no limitations. We really can't describe him the way we want to. And therefore, we cannot enlarge him as if we can stretch God and make him wider. It does not mean the sense of having a magnifying glass. Okay. As if he's small and you put it to him and it makes him look a little bigger. Okay. But what the text expresses when it says magnify, the Hebrew word simply means to spread the news about him. Yes, yes, yes. It simply means to let somebody know about his goodness. David says, I will spread the good news about God. This is what all of our jobs is to do as a Christian. Our job is to let somebody know who Jesus is. Yes, yes. And our job is to let somebody know how awesome God is. Yes. I mean, your job isn't to come here and look pretty and cute, show off your shoes and your dress. Your, shoe isn't, your, 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 your job isn't to come here and just sit here and give an offering and give a tithe, clap your hands and go back home. No, your job is to come here and learn something. Come on. 
Okay. Take notes about something because you know you're going to forget. No. Right. Come on, you know you're going to forget. Your memory ain't that sharp. <laughs> it's your job to take notes and go home, study God's word, then go out in the community, in your job, in your home, and let somebody know about the good news of the gospel. Yes, come on, guys, come on. David says this isn't a passive God, but it is a, a, a passive gospel, but it is an active gospel. Mm -hmm. It is a gospel where we ought to be working towards something. Where we ought to be reaching a loss. Come on, some of your family members by now ought to be saved. Right. But sometimes we don't minister to them like we should. We overlook the idea and say, well, they're family. That's just the way they are. As if God can't change them. No, you got to look at them for the way it is. They need to be saved. Yes, yes, yes. Come on now. And therefore, you need to do everything you can to witness to them. Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. Amen. Uh, so David gives us the idea and the understanding that God's name needs to be exalted. That word exalted in the Hebrew simply means to be lifted up. It means to be lifted up higher. This is why we know from the scriptures that the Bible says, wherefore God has given him a highly exalted name. And given him a name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Yes. Of things in heaven uh -huh. and things in the earth yeah. and things under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Yeah. You got to lift him up higher. The scripture says if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me. David says he needs he needs to be exalted. And if anybody going to exalt him, it's got to be the same sinner's not going to exalt him. No, they won't. So you got to do your part. David says, I exalted him. Then he said, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Yes. When David pins this particular portion of the Psalms, David was going through some trials and tribulations. Saul was trying to kill him. He, he was running from Saul. Saul, who shot an arrow at him, tried to kill him. The arrow hit the wall, and, and, and here it is. Saul is angry at David all because of jealousy. David's trying to find a place of refuge. He's no longer welcome in the house of God to worship. And so David now runs. He panics. He's running. He gets Goliath's sword. And David runs into the enemy camp. And he goes into Gath. And he meets up with the people in Gath, which was the Lord's enemy. You know Gath. That's where Goliath came from. David slaughtered the Goliath. And now he runs back into the enemy camp, not thinking things through. But because of fear, he puts himself in a bad predicament that only God can see him through. All right. Okay, y'all not feeling me, so let me get and dive into this text. In other words, David realized when it was too late because he didn't take time to contemplate and pray. He just kind of died in the situation seeking refuge and protection and unfortunately he chose to go into the enemy's camp. Don't you know when you go into the enemy's camp you won't find protection. You won't find them to be a refuge. You won't find comfort amongst your enemies. You'll find comfort amongst the people of God and the presence of God, under the power of God, but we see within the text, he goes into the enemy's camp. Jesus. And when he gets to the enemy camp, he realized he made a dumb decision. Now, I know there's somebody up in here who realizes they made some dumb decisions in the past. They made some decisions out of fear, made decisions out of failure, made decisions out of lack and pressure or peer pressure. And based on those decisions you made, you find yourself with the wrong people or in the wrong places where the blessings of God do not flow. Brothers playing and acting crazy. David decides 
I got to find a way out of this. He acts crazy. He, he acts like he's having convulsions. He falls on the floor. He starts kicking and scratching. David allows spit to run down his beard to where it's just piling up all over his face. He's, he's bouncing on the floor as if he's a madman. And all of a sudden, the men in the gap are looking at him like, what's wrong with this dude? He was just all right a few minutes. David is now on the floor playing crazy. Now, you got to understand in the Hebrew culture, there was a reason why David did this because under, under the Hebrew culture or under the culture of that time period when a man has spittle running down the side of his face into his beard and having convulsions it was a sign that he had lost his mind Okay. Not only was it a sign that he had lost his mind, but it was a sign of disgrace. It was a, the sign, it was a sign that this brother had lost all his scruples. That this brother has come to a place where he's destitute and to a place where he's totally out of his mind. And anytime you go, go to the enemy and go to people in your past and go to situations in your past that God gave you the victory over in the past and you run back to it for comfort, you have literally lost your mind. Oh my God. Anytime you go through distressful times and times of depression and times of low self-esteem and times of struggle and you go back to the liquor cabinet or you go back to the liquor store or you go back to your ex or you go back to situations that God done brought you out of, turn to your neighbor and say, you done lost your mind. Yeah. Oh my God. The text teaches us that David done lost his mind. He done went back to some past, the past and the past where he got his victory over and now he's seeking the enemy for counsel and now he's on the floor. He's trying to act crazy in order to get out of this jam and so David does the only thing he could do at this particular time and that was act crazy. The scripture tells us that he began to scramble against the doors. That word it is scramble under the Vulgate and the Septuagint means he begins to drum upon the door. He begins to beat upon it and not only does he begin to beat upon it but watch this he begins to scratch upon the doors and as he scratches upon the doors it literally means in the translation in the Hebrew it means the word tua and that word actually expresses the letter T so watch this David is losing his mind he's in a place he's got no business being in he's going crazy and the people who are there are looking at him like he's he's out of his mind he's in a shameful position turn to your neighbor Say, when you do the wrong thing, you'll find yourself in shameful positions. <laughs> Woo, he say, finding himself in a shameful predicament because anytime you don't put your total trust in God, you'll end up ashamed. But watch this, Dave is playing crazy. He's acting like he lost his mind, and all of a sudden, watch this, he's he's banging upon the doors and he begins to scribble a T. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get it. So let me hurry up and help you out. He begins to scramble the letter T, watch this, which is the shape of a cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> and the Jew is thinking he, he's shaping a T that looks like a cross. It's almost as if David was saying, can't nobody help me but Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if David is saying, can't nobody bring me out of this one but the Lord. Mm -hmm. okay. It's almost as if David is saying the only way I'm going to make it out of this situation is through the blood of Jesus. I wish I had a witness up in here. Who knows if it had not been for the cross. David sees himself in a crazy predicament. He pins verse 4 because he realizes the goodness and the mercy of God himself. And so David says, I sought the Lord and he heard he was kicked out of, the, of, of this place where he went and started acting crazy by the king. It was God who allowed the king to look at David as if he had lost his mind totally. And the king says, do we need any more crazy people up in here? Don't you realize the world is already, already has enough crazy people already in it? And the last thing they need is one of y'all crazy Christians. Invading their territory and space. <laughs> they say they got enough to deal with with their own crazy kind. And the last thing they want. Aren't you glad that the world don't want you? Aren't you glad that the world feels 
they don't need you. Sometimes God will allow you to do things that you know are wrong. And sometimes he don't beat you like you should be beat. But he provides a way of escape. Not so you can tell a lie the next time. Or not so that you can go back to the past the next time. Just so that you will learn from this experience and keep your trust in the cross. Scripture says they looked at him and their faces were ready and never ashamed because anytime you put your trust in God, there's no shame in that. Because God going to give you the victory every time. And victory, do, victory doesn't mean you simply get what you want. But it simply means God brings you through. And God gets what he wants out of you. Okay. And what is that? The praise. Okay. He wants you to give him the praise. He wants you to give him the honor. And so that's why he brings you out with his mighty hand. Amen. And you will never be ashamed when you put your total trust in God because God will use the situation to humble you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the devil will try to tell you that the situation is shameful to you. And what you've got to realize is you have to agree with what God says. Yes. Because as Christians, sometimes we look as if we're weak. But the scripture says when we are weak, yes. that's when he is made strong. Our strength comes through weakness when we can only depend on nobody but God. Uh, uh, David said, this poor man cries and the Lord delivered him out of all his troubles. Can I preach like I feel it? In other words, David is saying, when I was in times where I was in need, when he was in a poor predicament, when he had no food, no shelter, when he had no friends, there was nobody to cry out to but God. And sometimes God will take all your friends away and all your people that you used to come for for comfort. And he'll take everything that you put your trust in just so you can put your total trust in him. Yeah. David said, this poor man cried. In other words, David had nothing really to offer God and he really had nothing to offer man at that particular time. And so David said, I cried out to God because he was like a man who was poor in spirit. He was a man who knew he needed God bad and without God, he knew he wouldn't make it. I wish I had a witness up in here who would say, you know what, without God, I know I wouldn't survive. I mean, without God, I'd be doing something crazy right now. Without God, I'd be doing and in some places where I know I should not be. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, the scripture says this poor man cried, which does not suggest that he broke down in tears, but it means he begins to pray out to God. He began to open his mouth. them. Y'all not feeling me. Uh, I've taught y'all this before. We did a, a ministry on the presence or the angelic presence of the Bible. I told you there was a time when my mother and the kids and all of us were riding in the car and I'll never forget my mother was driving and we were coming down that hill in University Hill and all of a sudden all of a sudden my mama car broke down started smoking from under the hood. I'll never forget we're coming down that two lane way lane and my mother said, Jesus. And after she said, Jesus, I will never forget. She said, kids, y'all need to pray. My mama don't know how to fix no car. There's no mechanic available at this particular time. And my mother didn't have the money. Watch this. She's a single parent mother, mother trying to raise three kids. And so all of a sudden, we began to pray. And within moments, a car pulled up, parked on the side of us in the second lane. In the second lane, so we was literally like blocking traffic, but nobody was coming down. So all of a sudden, this brother gets out of the car, and he comes up to my mother and said, do you guys need some help? Everybody in the, in the car started praising God. <laughs> and we kids, we all started praising God. We like, yes, we need some help. My mother said, thank you, Jesus. This brother says, okay, let me go get my tool, and I'll be right back. He goes up under, grabs a tool. He, he looks up under the hood. We really can't see him. Within seconds, he told my mother to start the car. And I'm sitting there saying, well, how can he fix it that fast? He don't even really know what's going on with the car. 
Well, my mother started the car up and it said vroom. And we all looked at each other and said, thank you, Lord. Right, right. And so now my mother's getting out the car to thank this brother. We looking at the hood, waiting on this brother to come from around the hood. And my mother goes to thank him and she said, wait a minute, where did he go? <laughs> And we said, what you mean where he go? He in front of the hood. She said, no, he not. We looked behind us to see where the car was, that it was parked next to us, and the car was gone. Mm -hmm. And we all stood there and looked at each other and said, oh, my God, that was an angel. Right, right. We all got revelation from child to adult that there was an angelic presence that just showed up because I done had cars for years and cars break down on me and I ain't never fixed a car like that. Right. <laughs> and I've never disappeared from in front of a hood and my cars never just disappeared. We realized at that moment that we had angels that was watching over us. Right. David said the angel of the Lord encamped around the Watch this, that we have angels that are here on earth that are here to protect us and yes. serve us. Yes. The scriptures allows us to know this true in Hebrews 1 verse 14. It says, not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. In other words, what the text is trying to teach us is that God sends us angels, watch this, to minister to us. This is why the Bible says that we ought to be on our best behavior and entertain strangers well because we don't know when we're entertaining angels. And the scriptures point back to Abraham and it points back to Lot when the angels came and rescued Lot. Lot did not know that these were angels he thought they were men. But the angels saved Lot because the men in the city wanted to rape the angels and Lot. Mm -hmm. yes. And so God used the angels to grab Lot and his family and snatch them out of there by force. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God knows that you're going to be slow when he tells you to go. Right, mm -hmm. right. And sometimes he got to do things yes. <laughs> his way. Yes. You got that right. Yes. And sometimes he'll use people He'll use people who are like angels to you and angels in general yeah. to rescue you out of your trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a witness up in here. I'm getting ready to close. Because the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes his refuge in the Lord. Let me help you to understand the text. What the Bible is saying is simple. It's saying, oh, taste and see. Right. How good God is. Has anybody ever tasted God before? Okay, I'm glad you didn't say yes. You can't taste him. I mean, what does the text mean, oh, taste and see? Well, what it really means in the Hebrew, the word taste means to experience him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see how good he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I never forget, I never forget, I never forget. We go to one of our favorite restaurants at the church called Cracker Bear. We was at Cracker Bear, you know, a few months ago, and I never forget. Every time we went, we we love that that double chicken that we get every time, extra crispy. I mean, we love to get them, we love to get them 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 them, them collard greens and the macaroni and cheese and I mean, we love to do what we do when we get there. We're going to eat good. Everybody got the double-breaded buttermilk chicken on display. And so here it is. We, we, we up there and we eating at Cracker Barrel. You ought to give me a discount because this is on TV. Okay, you really owe me a discount because I'm promoting you on TV. So watch this. Here we are at Cracker Barrel. And, and, and every time we got through eating, my, my mama, my, my, my father-in-law, I mean, everybody grubbing. And then they would always get this apple pie that had ice cream on it, that had this major, you know, this, this crust on it. I mean, as soon as you break into it, the crust just... I mean, it's golden, and it's got caramel in it, and it's got the apples, and, 
every time they would eat it. And yeah. I'm not a dessert brother like that. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a ghetto snack dude. I, I like Lud Debbie's. <laughs> I, I, I like, you know, the donut Lud Debbie's, the honey bun. Give me the Swiss roll. I'm a ghetto dude. So I, I really don't eat that. So they're enjoying it every time. And I'm also eating every time. They're like, come on, you got to try this. Every single time. So I finally gave in this time. They kept saying, this is good. The look on their faces is like they went to heaven. <laughs> and they was trying to take me with them. So I said, okay, I'll finally try it. I broke down and tried it because I'm a stubborn dude. This is the truth. So I took my fork. I bust through the crust. Got some of that cinnamon on it. Got that apple in there. Ooh, got that caramel in between that spoon. And then I lifted it up. And I tasted it because they was getting on my nerves. They kept telling me, you got to try this thing. I really didn't want to try it, but they kept telling me how good it was. So I tried it for myself, took a bite of that, and I said, mm. I said, wait a minute. Y'all been trying to get me to taste this all along? I said, ma'am, can I get what they have? And they brought me out my own portion. I smashed it. I ate it to the full. And they looked at me and said, I told you. You just needed a taste of it so you can have an experience. Can I preach like I feel? And I'm going to let somebody out there teach you, man. Because you don't know what it's like to experience the goodness of the Lord. Oh my God, can I preach to some sinners out there who have not tried him for yourself? We just came to tell you to be good. And unless you experience his goodness, you will never know what it's like to enjoy heaven on earth. Can I in other words, the text is teaching us that we've got to teach others and persuade others to try him. Yeah. And when they try him, they'll find out he's faithful. When you try him, you'll find out he's loving. When you try him, you'll find out he's kind. When you try him, you'll find out he's a forgiver. When you try him, He's a healer. When you try him, you'll find out he's a restorer. When you try him, you'll find out he'll make a way out of no way. When you try him, you'll say, I got to come back for more. And I got to speak to somebody who's been looking for a church home, who's been looking for the Lord. Get over here to God's way, God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on and set to your feet and give God some praise. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the message. Didn't that word just make you want to praise him? Didn't God just you know, touch your heart when you heard that message. I don't know about you, but I was touched by it, and I was the one preaching it. Don't you know, before you ever get the message, the preacher gets it first. We're inspired and encouraged. And I tell you, we hope you walk away blessed from this. We hope you experience the blessings of God like never before. And tell somebody about Jesus and the good news of the gospel. We just want you to know we're here, over here at God's Way Gospel Church inside Euclid Square Mall. We'll have the address on the screen, the location, and the time. Will you be blessed? We thank you for coming and spending your time with us when you could have spent it anywhere else. We hope to see you soon at God's Way Gospel Church. We serve an awesome God, and we declare in this place, we'll bless him no matter what. Look to see you soon. God bless you.